Did you just open FL Studio? Did you look at it and go, what the hell's going on? I'm so confused. Are you confused? Well, I'm gonna help you not be confused. I'm gonna take you step by step and I'm gonna hold your hand and you're gonna be okay. This video is from a longer video called the ABCs of FL Studio where I go into everything. So if you'd like to see that, check the video that I have linked in the description and let's get started unconfusing you. So I'm gonna start with these buttons over here. This button right here is the playlist. The playlist is everything right here where it says tracks, these boxes. The playlist is basically where you build your song. You can place patterns here. You can put samples in here. Automation clips, everything goes into the playlist. So the playlist is like your main spot. This is where you're chilling at. All the other places are kind of detours that are gonna all bring you back to the playlist. Playlist equals song. Song equals playlist. Then we have piano roll, but I actually wouldn't necessarily click this button to go to the piano roll because in your channel rack, you can right click anything and go to a piano roll. That button's not even necessary. Forget I said anything about it, it doesn't matter. Our next button right here is channel rack. The channel rack is basically a pattern. So if you make a pattern in here, you can put it onto the playlist. And this is the place where you can drag in samples and instruments. Now this button that looks like an equalizer is the mixer. This is where you're going to apply all of your effects. So for example, if you have this kick, you double click the kick and you go here to assign it to a mixer track. Now your kick is coming through this and is getting routed to the master. So it goes into this track first before it goes into the master bus. And this is where you can apply EQ, compressors, all of that good stuff. You basically wanna think of this as like a signal chain. The audio is coming from the sample, going into the mixer track, which is going out to the master. Without the mixer track, no audio comes through. All the audio comes through the mixer track. And if you don't have it routed to anything, it's just gonna go straight to the master. Next up, we have the browser. So if you click this button, it will show you the browser. The browser is where you keep all of your samples. It's where you load in plugins. It's where it shows you everything in your project. And it's where you can access things like FL Cloud. Basically your browser is like your sample folder within FL Studio. Now here we have open project slash plugin picker. I've never used this once, but basically it's gonna show you just all of your plugins that you have active and all of your channels, your patterns, all of that stuff. And the one right beside it is Tempo Tapper. This is when you tap it and it will set a tempo based on your tapping. So it will try to guess the tempo that you're tapping to. This is really helpful for whenever you're trying to make a song similar to another song. If you don't wanna look up the BPM, you can just like tap it out. Or sometimes if you have an idea in your head, you can just kind of tap it out while you're singing it is something I do a lot. And this little Mickey Mouse finger right here is the touchpad, which I've never once used because I don't I don't do live stuff. And all these buttons up here at the top right, I wouldn't even worry about because they're really like a roundabout way of doing other things that you could do more simply than tapping up here, kind of like with the piano roll. So I would just forget that those buttons even exist. Now let's go to this little section right here. What these little squares do? What these little buttons do? I'm gonna show you. This is your metronome. So when this is toggled on, you have a metronome playing. When it's toggled off, no metronome. To the right of metronome, we have wait for input to start playing. Another one of those things. I didn't even know it existed. So if you're a beginner, you don't need it. Pretend like it's not there. Countdown before recording. Now this is if you're recording onto your MIDI keyboard or your typing keyboard, or if you're recording vocals and you need like a little bit of a countdown before it starts recording. Whenever you press play, it's gonna hit the metronome four times before actually starting to record. Blend recording overdub. This has been on since I've had FL Studio. I don't know what it does. I've never used it, so you probably don't need to either. I've been using this literally 10 years and I have no idea what that is. Um, loop recording. So loop recording is basically when you want to keep trying a part out over and over again. But let's say you select a section to record and the way you select a section is by holding down control while clicking. 
and then you drag on the timeline. And then let's say you want to get a couple of different takes for something. You just record and then you press spacebar to start the recording. And then it's just going to keep looping the recording. All right, let's go down a row to typing keyboard to piano keyboard. Now, this is an important one. Let's just load up FL keys. Whenever you press letters on the keyboard, it's going to transfer that to notes. But if you turn that off, it will not do that. Instead, what it'll do when you press different letters, it's going to correspond to one of these tools up here. Now, to the right of typing keyboard, we've got scrolls to reach time markers. If you've ever seen like a project playthroughs or something like that on YouTube, that's basically what that is. I'll give you an example to show you what that does. So I drew, just drew out this simple little melody so you can see what it does. It's going to move the view of the project to match with this time marker. This yellow thing is the time marker, by the way. Uh, step editing mode is the foot. It doesn't make any sense to me why you do it, but just in case you want to, is uh, whenever you type out notes on your keyboard, it will put them into the piano roll. And then you can mess with them from there. And this paper clip is enable notes slash clip groups. Decade using FL Studio. Have zero clue what that means. So I wouldn't worry about it. And the reason I'm telling you what to worry about and what not is because I could like research all this stuff and figure out what all of it means. But if you're a beginner and you're just, you want to use this to make music, there's just certain things that I think FL Studio made too complicated for no reason. And there are things in here I think you will never understand and never have to use. Also, multi-link to controllers. Maybe if you're a big MIDI person with a MIDI controller, maybe that, maybe that's something that you would need to know. Uh, but you can just look that up on YouTube specifically, and I'm sure somebody's got the answer for that. I do not. So this little section right here is basically your grid and how it's going to map out the grid. If we put it to bar, you can see there's less lines. And this is going to basically be how what you put in snaps to it. So you see, I can only move this sample by bar by bar. If I change this to beat, you get more grid lines. One fourth a beat, more grid lines. And that basically determines like how granular you want to be. If you don't want it to snap to the grid at all, you can either click this little horseshoe right here. And so it goes to none, or you can just select none from this menu. Uh, but usually what I like to do is keep it on a beat or one fourth a beat or whatever. And you can alt click to drag it around without snapping to the grid. And it'll just go wherever you put it. So let's go over these little doohickeys right here. This is the tempo, just up or down. You scroll up to decide what tempo you want, or you can right click it and you can type in a value and just set whatever tempo you want. Stop play button, that's self-explanatory. Uh, this tab right here, pattern and song. If you click song, it's gonna play in the playlist, everything you have there. If you click pattern, it's only gonna play the pattern you have. So if we had, like a little pattern. But then if I click song, it's not going to play that pattern because that pattern is not in the playlist. So now that I'm on this pattern, wherever I click in the playlist, it's going to drop that pattern. And now let's go to these little buttons right here. What do buttons do? I'm going to teach you. So the difference between draw and brush are that if you play something here and you hold it down, it's just going to move this one thing you placed. But if you use the paintbrush, you click it and you hold it down, it'll copy it and paste it. I usually use the paintbrush because it's just easier. Uh, delete, that is basically just if you've got something in the playlist you want to delete, you use that and you delete it. Or if you don't want to switch between paint and delete, you can just right click anything. And boom, there it goes. It goes bye bye. Mute, this is a really handy dandy one i like this one it's good if there's like an idea you had that you're not sure if you want to keep or not you can just leave it muted without deleting it so you know at which point in the playlist you had it slip or i don't know what slip is all right and this little box knife looking thing is slice so that's basically just let's say you want to cut this pattern in half you just click left click anywhere you drag it down wherever you want to slice it at and you slice it up this is good for like 
doing vocal chops or slicing up samples and things like that. Select. This is just a multi-select tool, which I never use that though, because I try to stay on the paintbrush and you can press control and click and that will enable you to select multiple things. Uh, I would just control and click if I were you, but if you don't want to, you can use the select tool. Zoom, trust me, I know this. The only time you're ever gonna use this zoom tool is by accident because it does this and it just zooms it in all the way. But thankfully, you can left click again after it zooms in to get it back to normal. But uh, yeah, I hate that thing. I wish it wasn't there. So many times I've accidentally clicked that. And the last one over here is playback. It just does what it says. Wherever you click, it's going to play back that spot. You can also do this in the actual uh, channel rack as well. Like if you go to the piano roll, you can select playback, which is the same icon. Right, that's pretty much it, except for one thing I think is really important. If you need to undo something, let's say you place this here, then you place this here, and you need to undo one of them, you just press Control Z. That undoes one. But if you wanna undo multiple things that you did, you hold down Control Alt Z and that'll go down the line of things you've done and keep undoing it. And that's pretty much it for the FL Studio interface. If you have any questions or I missed anything, let me know down in the comments. And if you wanna see the full video going through everything on FL Studio, check out the ABCs of FL Studio, which is linked in the description. <sighs>